After going through all of the different videos in this lesson, you may be sort of exhausted because of the wide variety of ways to access files that are different depending on whether you have a Mac or whether you have a PC or whether you're using Colab on the cloud. Is there not just one method that we could use that would work on all of these different platforms? And the answer to that is yes. If we are able to acquire the files through the internet, then basically the same code will work on every instance of Python. So you may be wondering, if I want to use this method, how am I easily going to get some text onto the internet? I don't run a web server. I don't have my own file server. So how am I going to do that? It turns out that GitHub provides a very simple way of getting some text onto the internet and then making it available to basically anyone on the planet at any point in the indefinite future. And that's called using a GitHub gist. In order to use GitHub gist, you have to create a GitHub account and log into it. But once you're logged into your GitHub account, all you have to do is just type gist.github.com and the screen will come up. So if I want to create some text, I can just create some text here, maybe put in a new line. And I'm done. I can give it a name and a description. And then I can choose whether I want this to be available only to people who know the secret URL, or if I would rather make a public gist that anyone can use. I'm going to go ahead and create a public gist because there's no reason why this needs to be a secret. So the gist ends up showing up here as newline.txt. Of course, the way that I want to actually be able to access this is I don't want to read in the web page. I want to read in the raw text. So if I click on the raw button here, I can see the actual raw text. All I need to do is copy this URL here and paste it in to my code. Once you've created some gists, you can share them with people just by giving them your GitHub username. So for example, if you want to see all of my public gists, you can go to gist.github.com slash Baskoff, and it'll show you uh, the gists that I have made, starting with the most recent one. Here's the one that I just made. Here's some other ones we're going to look at. Here's one with uh, all the months of the year. Here's another one with some random text in it. And any one of these I can click on and then use the raw to uh, acquire the URL that allows me to load that text from the internet. It's actually relatively easy to load files or lists from the internet. The key thing is to use a library called requests. The request module is not, unfortunately, part of the Python standard library. If you have installed Jupyter Notebooks through Anaconda, I think it's uh, probably already included. Uh, if not, you'll have to use a package manager like Conda or PIP to install it on your local computer. Once you've done that, though, you won't regret it because it makes loading things from the internet super simple. So here you can see uh, this is the gist that I made with uh, Lauren Ipsum in it. I'll, so I have assigned that to the variable URL. In order to retrieve a requests object from a URL, you just use the .get method. And that assigns it to what we're going to call a response object. The response object has a text attribute. And so I can take the text attribute attribute of the response object, and that essentially gives me the text of the file. Here I've assigned it to a variable called file text, and then we can print it. So if I run this code, I see here's the lorem ipsum text, which was in this gist that I showed you right here. The response text, however, is not an iterable item. 
So we can't load the response object and then do a for loop and iterate through it. So that's one of the reasons why I introduced the split lines method, because when we retrieve the text attribute, we end up with a single string that has the entire file. So if we use the split lines method on it, that will split it apart into a Python list. So um, let's practice this one using this gist that I made that contains the months of the year. So if we look at the raw file, we can see that each month is on a separate line with a new line character at the end. That's the perfect situation for uh, using split lines. So if I run this code, I can see that I have read in that file from GitHub and then split it into a Python list with each of the months of the year. So this is actually a great way of utility sorts of things like this, where you don't want to have friends or colleagues or students have to download files and then figure out where they put them on their local drive. You can just simply put the file up on GitHub as a gist and then as long as you give the people the, the raw URL, they can have access to that data at any point in the future. As far as I know, there's no time limits or space limits on gists. So uh, once you make a gist and, and share the public URL, it should be basically available to people's code for the indefinite future.